Hello, everybody. Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com. Today, let's explore some of the creative potential of MIDI controllers in Cubase. There's a term that you hear when you're dealing with MIDI instruments called MIDI CC, and that's referring to what's known as a MIDI continuous controller. Just about any synthesizer that you're going to open up in Cubase is going to make use of these MIDI continuous controllers or MIDI CCs, and they're typically right on the instrument interface. For example, if I open up Retrolog, one example are these little knobs or sliders down here in the lower left. One is the modulation wheel, one is the pitch bend. If I move the modulation wheel, you get this kind of a sound. If I hit a note and move the pitch wheel, I get this kind of a sound. They're referred to as a continuous controller because in order to make that sound happen, these knobs or sliders have to send out a series of information or instructions to the synthesizer, and they have to send them out continuously to control the sound. You can affect these controllers just like I did here by moving my mouse, or you can actually get into the program and draw this information as graphical data, and that gives you a lot more control over it. We use this MIDI controller data mainly because it makes the music more interesting. Again, if I play this retrolog part, that's a nice sound, but in no way is it as interesting as it is when I add some MIDI control to it. By allowing the sound to change over time, it gives you a lot more expression to the music. Another great example of this is to go to the included Iconica sketch and something I've shown you in previous videos. We choose this instrument called the timpani. Everybody's heard this before. And you have the option to change that to a timpani roll when you play it. For example, if I hit a key and we hear it. That's interesting, but if I grab the modulation wheel on my keyboard and do the same thing but move the modulation wheel, that just takes it all to a whole new level. One of the most common MIDI continuous controllers is certainly the modulation wheel like we have down here with Retrolog. And like I've already demonstrated, this shows up pretty much on every synthesizer. So it's a very common controller to perform some real-time changes. But of course, there's lots of other options. And many people have many other options of controllers specific to their own setups. One of the things that's going to come along in your journey as you're learning to understand and use this kind of stuff is how can you make something like this modulation wheel or maybe some other kind of controller that you have in your setup to do the jobs or tasks that you want it to do. Meaning, how can you kind of reinterpret the MIDI controller messages that this slider transmits? Maybe you want it to do something else besides modulation. Maybe you want it to do volume. Maybe you want it to do some kind of note expression. And again, maybe you have some other kind of controller that's convenient in your setup and you want it to do some kind of other task different from what it was originally designed. There's a couple of tools that are available to us that you're going to want to become familiar with. The first one is on each track, as you go up to the routing tab and come down on the right, there's this little cross area, and this stands for the input transformer. This allows you to take incoming MIDI messages on any track in your project and many times turn them into something completely different and do a completely different task. We'll come back to this in a second. The other tool that's very valuable that will help you along the way is a MIDI plugin. We go over on the tabs and we look for the one that says MIDI inserts. If I open that up in these drop down lists, I can look down the list for one that's called the MIDI monitor. Select that. This gives you a visual picture of all the MIDI information that comes in on any particular track that you set this insert up on. Right now, if I take my modulation wheel and I start to move it, immediately I'm given a long list of information that's happening on this track. The very first thing over on the left under the status column is telling me that my MIDI modulation wheel is transmitting controller one data. This is very valuable as you're gonna see in a minute. There's all kinds of other things in this list to investigate, but anytime you're trying to understand your MIDI information in general, put your MIDI monitor on your track and look at what's being transmitted. That's gonna help you understand, especially when you start making some changes. Now let's make some changes and watch what happens to this controller one data. I'm going to go back to the track. I'm going to open up that input transformer. And by the way, we can set this input transformer to operate only on the track, or we can make it handle the whole project. We're going to stick with operating the track for now. Then we have to go to this option that says open the panel. And this opens up the track input transformer. 
dialog box, and I've made many videos on this in the digital audio manual, and it's a subject onto itself to learn all the operations and things that you can do here. But I wanna give you a couple of quick uses that you can just copy from this video, and it will help you get started in understanding how to do all this. When you're looking at this dialog, if you have some information here already, you can come up to the right and say remove, and any other screens you can hit remove, and that'll give you a blank area where you can start right from the beginning. The first thing we're gonna do is come up to this button that says insert and click on that. The first thing we see is type is, we're gonna leave that alone. The next thing we see is equal, we're gonna leave that alone. But in the area that says parameter one, I click on that, I'm gonna come down to the option that says controller, choose that option. I'm gonna come back up to this button and hit insert again. At the very end, I'm gonna make sure that it says and. If I click on it again, it turns to or, but I wanna make sure it stays on and. And then starting at the far left, under the filter target, I'm gonna come down to where this says the subtype. And this is one of the deceiving things that can happen in this screen, because once I choose subtype, it doesn't say subtype. Now it says MIDI controller number. In the next column, I'm gonna take the option that says equal. And then in the next column, I'm gonna click on this, if I spin it with my mouse wheel, I get all kinds of different information here. I'm going to look for the one that says CC1 modulation. And then I take that option. If we look at the very bottom of this dialog, we have a list in the bottom right. And if we click on it, it says filter or transform. If it's on the filter option, whatever we choose in here, it's going to block that out. Or in other words, it's going to filter it out. If we choose this transform option, whatever we have in here is going to be changed to some other value or in other words, transformed. So I'm gonna leave it on transform. And now in this second area, I'm gonna come over and hit this insert button. And in the first area, I'm gonna choose the one that says type. Going to the next column, I'm gonna take this option that says set to a fixed value. And in the next column, I'm gonna choose controller. Then I'm gonna come back up and hit insert again. And on the first one, I'm gonna say subtype again. In the next column, I'm gonna come down to where it says set to a fixed value. And then when I click this next column, again, I can spin my mouse, and I will get all kinds of different MIDI options here. And this is where I can choose to turn my modulation into something completely different. I'm gonna go up to the option when I spin it. It says CC7 main volume. I'm gonna choose that. So what this dialog is now saying is any modulation wheel that comes in here on CC1, it's ultimately gonna get changed over to CC7 and it's gonna work that way. Let's see if that's true. I'm gonna close this down. I'm gonna come back to our MIDI monitor. I'm gonna clear the list out. Before when we did this, it said controller one on the very first column. But when I move my modulation wheel now, everything says controller seven, which means my modulation wheel is now transmitting controller seven data. And I'm gonna be able to control that kind of stuff on my MIDI tracks. So between your input transformer, which allows you to actually change the information and your MIDI monitor, which allows you to verify that information, these are the kind of tools that will help you make progress through some of this kind of confusing information that may be hard to understand any other way. Two other things I wanna show you about this input transformer. Number one, you won't see anything unless you come up into the upper left area and actually put a check mark there. That turns it on. If I turn the first one off, it completely deactivates any options here. And the other thing is how to save this as a preset. Once you've created something like this, you can come up to the drop down list. And there's a choice here that says save the changes as a preset. We'll call this input, and I'll put the date by it so I know. If I remove everything and then click on this list, it shows my user presets right here. And I can come down and select that. And then I'm right back to the thing I just created. So let's do a few examples and see how we can use this in some of our production area. Let's go to the Iconica sketch because it has so many options for this. I'm gonna come down to the string area and I'm gonna choose violins one. For now, I'm gonna hit the legato option. If I create a MIDI part and then open it up, over in the left tabs is one that says Node Expression. There's nothing in this list when you open it up. Typically, there'll be an option you can right-click, and it'll say Import from the Instrument. This is already here. But as we look down this list, we can see we have MIDI CC commands here. There's CC1, CC2, and they have some kind of little explanation next to them. CC1 says Modulation. I'm going to turn my Input Transformer on for this track. I'm going to open up the panel. I'm going to hit the little check mark and I'm going to load the preset that I just created. And for now, I'm going to change this back to just modulation. If I go to the chord tabs and I make sure on live input it says chords, that's going to make the notes follow my chord track. And now when I hit a note on my keyboard and I move that modulation wheel, I'm able to add that kind of extra expression into the note. 
And then if I record it and play something. You can see the MIDI notes and you can see little lines in here, which give you a picture of what the modulation wheel is doing. If I open this up and come down into this controller lane and at the bottom, if I hit the plus button, I have an option that says show the used controllers. I click on that. Now this is showing that modulation data that I just wrote in. And it's also telling me over here on the left that that was CC1 data. If I duplicate this track, I can go back to this data. I can tell it to select all of these events and then delete them. And then on this track, when I go back up to the routing and my input transformer and open the panel, let's change this modulation data. I'm going to spin it up to where it says CC11 expression. Close this down. If I go to my MIDI monitor on this track, move the modulation, I can see that it's transmitting on controller 11. So if I open this track up and then open the note expression, I can see that at CC11, there is expression data. Let's actually record some different notes here. I'm going to delete these. Then I'll play this part, and as I'm recording it, I'll move the modulation wheel to record some expression data. And if I open up this MIDI part, again, I'll go down to the plus sign. I'll tell it to show the used controllers. And now I have something that looks like modulation data, but if I look over on the left, it says expression CC11. So even though I'm still using the modulation wheel, I'm transmitting and recording the CC11 data. And you can continue to do this with anything you're trying to get to, change it in your input transformer to whatever you want. Let's do one more just for the heck of it. It says that CC10 is pan data. Let's stay on the same track and I'll go back up to my input transformer. And in the area where it says CC11, I'll click on that and I'll move it to CC10 for pan. And although I won't play anything new, as the track is playing, I'll move the modulation wheel and that'll change the panning data. And you probably have to have headphones on to really hear that. But now this part is going from one side from the left to the right. If I open it up, again, I can come down to the plus sign, tell it to show me all the used controllers. And now I have panning information written in here, which I could rewrite or change any way I want to modify the way it sounds. So that should give you some idea of what the MIDI continuous controller data is, how you can use it, probably most importantly, how you can manipulate it to change it into something else, depending on what kind of equipment or hardware you have that'll allow you to get results completely different from what may have been transmitted in the first place. So take those tips, put them to use in your own music and productions, have some fun with it, and I will see you next time. All right, it's going to wrap it up for today. As always, if you haven't already, click the link in the description of this video to learn how you can get access to the all-new Digital Audio Manual Preferred. It's the clear, step-by-step -step solution showing you not only the tips, but all the secret and typically never talked about features that'll take you to a higher level of using your software. If you've been searching for an all-in-one solution to take you from start to finish and learning Cubase and WaveLab and other music software, this is exactly what you've been looking for. So click on the link in the description and come and be part of the clear path to a better learning experience. So today we had a look at the subject of MIDI continuous controllers. We looked at some controllers like the Mod Wheel or the Pitch Bend. We learned how we could change that information with the Input Transformer and how we could analyze that information with our MIDI monitor, put it to use on a few different tracks, heard the results, and gained extra proficiency in how we can manipulate that MIDI data no matter what it is and change it into whatever we need it to be. And we'll continue to explore all these different creative options and the tools that we have available to us. As always, it's great to have you guys here. And I'll see you on the next video.